Assalamu alaikum and uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, uh, dear students and uh, viewer. Today we have the topic uh, hematopoiesis. Uh, what is hematopoiesis? Uh, we will discuss it in the further slides. Uh, but uh, before starting hematopoiesis, one thing to note that uh, hematopoiesis includes in both of the course outline of fourth and sixth semester for BS Medical Laboratory Technology. Uh, my name is Tanvir Tara and uh, I am lecturer at Sarhad University of Science and Information Technology. Today, uh, we will be talking about hematopoiesis and the role of bone marrow. So, uh, hematopoiesis in very simple word, we can say that uh, it is the process by which blood cells are made. And uh, these blood cells are uh, white blood cells, platelet and red blood cells. So a hematopoiesis is a general term using for the production of all cell lines, all blood cell lines. Uh, overall, uh, it's called hematopoiesis. And uh, the production of WBCs is called uh, leukopoiesis. The production of platelet is called thrombopoiesis or uh, it's also called megakeropoiesis. And the production of red blood cell is known as erythropoiesis. If we define it, so it is the production of all type of blood cells including formation development maturation and then differentiation of blood cells this is known as hematopoiesis so uh, we have prenatal hematopoiesis and uh, postnatal hematopoiesis now we will look toward the difference between prenatal hematopoiesis and postnatal hematopoiesis Prenatal hematopoiesis is that hematopoiesis that took place in liver and spleen and lymph node uh, before birth. Uh, and uh, it also occurs in the bone marrow, where in the postnatal uh, hematopoiesis, uh, all the hematopoietic stem cells are migrated toward the bone marrow, and uh, uh, bone marrow is present in the sternum, vertebrae, ribs, skull, pelvis, and epiphyses of long bone so the hematopoiesis that occur after birth is postnatal hematopoiesis and hematopoiesis that occur before birth is known as prenatal hematopoiesis let's start from the very beginning uh, in very early life uh, uh, like uh, in fetal embryonic life uh, the cell which are responsible to do the function of hematopoiesis appears in the yolk sac around uh, third week of gestation and uh, that cells are called stem cells which are responsible for the formation of uh, WBCs, RBCs and platelets. It's mean uh, that uh, during gestational uh, period uh, hematopoiesis took place in the took place in the yolk sac and uh, simultaneously uh, erythropoiesis leukopoiesis and uh, thrombopoiesis occurs uh, in the yolk sac up to third uh, week of gestation uh, blood cells generation begins in the wall of the yolk sac and uh, during intrauterine life uh, and uh, you know that primitive erythroblasts also derived from the mesenchymal cells and uh, then uh, slowly uh, and gradually with the passage of time hematopoietic cells yeah, hematopoietic stem cells then start migrating toward the liver so this is definitive hematopoiesis and uh, definitive hematopoiesis mean that the migration start from the liver and uh, spleen toward the bone and uh, definitive hematopoiesis occurs throughout the majority of the human life. So we have to know that uh, what is stem cells and it's uh, very important to know the quality of a hemopoietic stem cell or a stem cell. So uh, stem cell is that cell whenever it multiply, it will multiply in asymmetric uh, passion. And uh, you know we have two uh, um, styles that uh, one is asymmetric 
passion uh, that have uh, the qualities of uh, replicating differentiating division and self renewal well the other one is symmetric it will move forward and forward so we have two group and uh, asymmetric means that uh, some of the uh, parent cells are move forward and then multiply and then mature and uh, give a desired cell and uh, the other group will maintain its own population those cells which maintain their own population and uh, having the property of self renewal is uh, called an hemopoietic uh, stem cell so uh, pluripotent stem cell uh, is a cell which have the capability of self renewal and as well as it will move forward to mature and differentiate into its other cells let understanding uh, this symmetrical and asymmetrical passion with an example uh, for example uh, if we uh, put an erythroblast in a petri dish uh, and uh, maintain uh, its regulation with the certain factors like interleukin and uh, erythropoietin so uh, it will move forward in petri dish we will not found erythroblast we will only found uh, mature cells but uh, on the other way if we have stem cell and uh, we put it in petri dish and give certain hormone and interleukins growth factors cytokines and maintain its regulation then we have two type of cells uh, cells that will move forward and become mature and uh, that cell uh, which have the capability of self renewal that is stem cell so this is a very a good example knowing the symmetrically and asymmetrical passion of the uh, cell so hemopoietic stem cells are those cells which have the capability of self renewal and they have the capability to move forward to mature to differentiate into its daughter cells where it also have the capability of self renewal we uh, came to know that uh, hematopoiesis is uh, prenatal and postnatal and what happened after the uh, prenatal hematopoiesis uh, as we know that uh, during the uh, first trimester uh, during the first initial week uh, yolk sac is responsible for the hematopoiesis stem cells is uh, present over there and uh, then with the passage of time liver developed and that uh, hematopoiesis stem cells then migrate toward the liver and uh, during third month of the station uh, hematopoiesis is completely uh, in the liver uh, so uh, hemopoietic stem cells is migrated to other parts of the body uh, like liver and uh, spleen and then it eventually go toward the bone marrow so uh, this is the process of migration uh, we we came to know that uh, during the process of hematopoiesis during prenatal uh, it will migrate from one place to other place and eventually it will migrate toward the bone marrow and then in the post natal life um, all the hematopoiesis all the bone marrow or red marrow and that red marrow is active marrow and the hematopoiesis is completely uh, covered by the red marrow um, in the adult life and so on so the whole process of hematopoiesis is uh, uh, in liver and in spleen and uh, yolk sac in initial stages uh, but with the passage of time uh, these hematopoietic stem cells start migrating during the fourth month of fetal life and uh, during the fourth month of uh, fetal life bone marrow is uh, uh, developed and uh, that responsibility is then switched over to the bone marrow 
Cairo. Uh, so we can say that uh, during four months, bone marrow is also have the responsibility of hematopoiesis and uh, uh, by the uh, time of birth uh, there is no active hematopoiesis in the liver and spleen because uh, all the active hematopoiesis is now uh, the responsibility of the bone marrow so uh, after birth all the bone marrow is uh, become active and uh, that active marrow is called red marrow uh, we have uh, to know that uh, we have uh, two types of marrow that uh, one type is red marrow and uh, red marrow is responsible for the hematopoiesis and that's why it's called active marrow uh, while on the other hand we have another type of marrow that is called yellow marrow uh, which consists of adipose tissue and uh, yellow marrow have the ability uh, to switch toward the uh, red marrow during uh, some critical condition and uh, as age increase uh, red bone marrow remain active in the membranous bone uh, like uh, sternum like skulls so uh, we have two types of uh, hematopoiesis now uh, one hematopoiesis is uh, extramedullary hematopoiesis and the other one is intramedullary hematopoiesis extramedullary hematopoiesis is uh, that hematopoiesis uh, which is in liver and spleen where intramedullary hematopoiesis is uh, that hematopoiesis which is in active marrow that is uh, the red marrow So uh, while looking toward uh, this picture, uh, we have uh, uh, edge of the per person and then uh, the site in which uh, hematopoiesis uh, take place. So we have uh, embryo and uh, then uh, we have the gestational period third to seven months uh, after seven months, uh, then uh, birth and uh, birth to maturity and then adult life. So hematopoiesis within the bone marrow is termed as intra medullary hematopoiesis that hematopoiesis which is inside the bone marrow is known as intramedullary hematopoiesis and uh, the term uh, extramedullary so uh, it is that hematopoiesis that occur outside of the bone marrow environment uh, in which we have liver and uh, spleen so Extramedullary hematopoiesis refers to hematopoiesis occur outside of the medulla of the bone marrow and uh, it can be physiological or pathological. Uh, physiologically, uh, it's occur before birth and fetal life. But uh, whenever it becomes pathologically, then we have some sort of disease or we have some sort of uh, problem in the uh, human body. In uh, the conversion of marrow, uh, first we know that uh, we have two types of marrow, uh, red marrow and uh, yellow marrow. And uh, with the passage of time, this red marrow is going toward, uh, uh, going to change in the yellow marrow. Uh, but the yellow marrow also have the capability to change in the uh, red marrow during circumstances, during some uh, hematological disease or like hemolysis. So they have the quality to reversible change to uh, red marrow but normally red marrow is going to change in the yellow marrow like uh, in uh, during puberty all the bones are responsible for the hematopoiesis all the bone marrow all the bones are responsible for actively hematopoiesis and uh, during the age of uh, 18 years um, like uh, hemers uh, femurs and uh, um, some of the uh, proximal end of the bones are are responsible for the hematopoiesis uh, but with the passage of time its decline became start and uh, during the age of 20 years uh, this hematopoiesis is now limited to sternum skull uh, ribs femur and uh, humor so the it also affect the celerity it's normal it's a physiological phenomena it's uh, also affect the celerity and that celerity is now uh, become 50 50 uh, 
I have uploaded a lecture on bone marrow so the celerity is discussed over there you can watch my uh, video on uh, YouTube as well uh, so celerity is discussed over there and uh, and finally bone marrow uh, having a great reservoir and it is the largest organ in the body and it is a very basic function of hematopoiesis um, it's the largest organ and uh, in size and weight it is uh, almost equal to the uh, size of the liver so summarizing uh, this uh, lecture uh, we came to know that hematopoiesis is the process of proliferation maturation and differentiation in which different type of cells are produced like wbc's rbc's and platelet the production of wbc's is called leukopoiesis the production of uh, uh, red blood cell is known as erythropoiesis and uh, the production of platelet is called uh, um, is called uh, thrombopoiesis and uh, we have two types of marrow red marrow and yellow marrow marrow uh, they are converted and uh, during conversion uh, normally red marrow is converted into the yellow marrow but in some in circum uh, in some situation uh, yellow marrow is also converted into the red marrow uh, so it's uh, all for uh, this lecture uh, thank you very much student uh, while listening the video and uh, tomorrow we have a Google meet inshallah we will discuss it in more detail uh, kindly listen to the video and uh, we have uh, uh, I'm going to share the link on uh, YouTube and on the Google Drive as well uh, so your question will be highly appreciated be prepared tomorrow we have a meeting inshallah so see you soon thank you very much